Hey, welcome to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today we've got a little workshop project we're going to do to hopefully solve a problem we've had with our Camp Easy ever since we built this thing. Um, if you've read anything about teardrops, you'll probably know that people say you need to put ventilation in them. I mean, let's face it, it's a small box. When you put two people in there, you can use up your air pretty quick. So we put some uh, frameless RV windows on the doors of our camper that are hinged at the top. And as much as we like them, I'll have to say in the nighttime, when you open those up a little bit and turn the vent fan on, all the air that it pulls through those windows basically makes the curtains um, come inward towards the cabin and they basically just flop around your belly all night long. And that is so aggravating. So today we're going to make some vents that we're going to have to pop into the wall in this thing. Hopefully we can pull the air in through the side of the walls and it won't be coming through those windows anymore and uh, causing the curtains to be flopping around. Let's get started. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to open the vent fan just a little bit here. And I'm going to turn it on. And normally we're going to turn it on. That's about the level we run it. We like to listen to the, to the noise of it at night. So we're going to undo the ties on the curtains just for privacy at night time. And the intent was for those just to hang down here. Um, but you're gonna see when I close this door what happens. Now tell me that wouldn't be aggravating, having those flop around on your belly all night. Designing our vent could not be easier. I'm gonna use a free program that you use online called Tinkercad. It was suggested to me by another member of the DIY Teardrop Campers community. Um, here I'm just going to do a little example project. I drug a sphere onto the build plate and I elevated it, made it a little larger. And I want to take away from this shape and add to it just to show you how this works. Here I've taken a square or a cube and I've elongated it. If you'll notice it's transparent which means it will take away from the shape. I'm going to select both objects and click the group button and it groups them together into one. So what if you want to add to a shape? Well, you just grab a shape from the toolbar on the right. In this case, a cylinder. We'll make it a little longer. Rotate it 90 degrees. And we'll move it inside the sphere. So let's say we want to make it a little smaller. We can make it a bit more narrow. Rotate it around, make it a bit shorter, and click all the objects and the group button. And now it becomes one final product. So that's how simple Tinkercad is to use. So on to our actual vent. I've basically taken a sphere, hollowed the middle of it out with another one, and now I'm stacking columns in there or cylinders in there to make the grate. I've selected four at a time, I've copied and I've pasted them, moving them around. Now I'm going to shorten them so they're not sticking out the edge of the vent. And let's add some more on a 90 degree angle so that we can make a true grid or grate. Once again, I'm going to select all objects and click group, and it becomes one final object. Now, the cool thing about Tinkercad is that you can not only view from different angles, but you can zoom far enough to go inside. Here's a view from the inside of the vent, so we can see exactly what the object is going to look like from every possible dimension and angle. Once the product is done, we then export the file into a program called Cura. Cura is what we call a slicer program. It breaks the object down into tiny little layers. In this case, about two tenths of a millimeter tall. And it's going to show us what each slice will look like as it's printed on our 3D printer.
Now on to the printer. So as cool as 3D printing is, there is a downside. It is terribly slow. It's a turtle's pace. Uh, this one vent is gonna take 33 hours to print, and I have a pair of them, so that's 66 hours total. Terribly slow. But the good thing is, I don't have to be in here in the shop watching over it the whole time. I'm gonna be off doing other things. I've got a Wi-Fi security camera aimed at this printer, and I'll check it every few hours just to make sure everything's okay. And if it's not, the printer is plugged into a, a, a Wi-Fi outlet where I can turn it off remotely. And hey, the part is custom, it's exactly what I want, and it's still faster than waiting on UPS to deliver it. believe after doing a little looking around I'm going to put the vent right up here in this spot that way it'll be pulling air out above our feet and it'll be at the other end of the cabin it will exit right about in here in the middle of that uh, that graphic hey Cleo what are you doing Cleo <laughs> you stink so bad I shouldn't be picking you up hey say hello to the camera this is our newest uh, addition to our family. This is Cleo, she's a little beagle. I think she's a mixed breed beagle, but we took her in and she is absolutely brighten things up around here. You're stinking up my jacket too. So I'm just gonna use this hole saw bit and I'm gonna drill into that, uh, into the wall. So I just cut through the quarter inch wall sheeting and you can see the foam inside that I used for insulation. I just wanna drill like halfway and then use the pilot hole from the other side to finish it up. There we go, there's the pilot hole on the outside. I'll start from there and go in and meet it halfway. So before I put the butyl tape on the back side of the exterior vent and screw it in place, I'm actually going to go on the inside and do a little work. And what I did is I went to a website called uh, Thingiverse. It's a place you can go and download 3D printer files for free. And I happened to find this one for a little vent. It's got three holes in it or three louvers in it. And I can, you know, direct the airflow of this however I want. You know, if I install it, you know, this way, I can direct the air down or sideways back in towards the cabin, which is pretty cool. But, you know, there are some large holes in this so what I did is I went to Home Depot and I bought this little kit and uh, you you use it to fix holes I guess in screen doors and in, in window screens um, it's two five by seven patches so I'll just cut those out and put them on the back of this thing and that should keep the bugs out and it must work well because have you ever seen somebody so happy about fixing a screen door this particular patch material has a paper backing that you remove because there's an adhesive on the back that's heat activated. And from what I read, you place this on the uh, window screen to be repaired and you heat it with a hair dryer and uh, it will melt those two in place. So that's kind of cool. So 
So I'm going to get a little crazy. I'm going to put the patch on the vent and I'm going to see if I can take this little micro torch from a distance and activate it. Yeah, it looks like I can. So forgive me if the audio is bad, but my head is right next to the microphone. I'm under this cabinet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these louvers facing forward where it's pulling the air in towards the cabin and away from this uh, shelf. And I'm just going to tilt it such that the top of the vent is level with the bottom of the cabinet. And I think where I'm at looks good. I'm going to use this little punch that I use to mark drill holes. If you don't have one of these, it's absolutely amazing. Got to get one of those. Just turned the ratcheting feature of this drill to its lowest setting. Let me put these in place. All right, so I've got the flashlight on my phone turned on. We can see it better. So you can see the louvers pointing forward, and you can see the screen in there to keep the bugs out. This looks pretty sharp. Before I put the vent on the outside, I'm going to take this roll of butyl tape and I'm going to put a line of it all the way around the perimeter of this thing. That way it'll be nice and weather sealed. I put a piece of masking tape here with a level and when I put this in, I'm going to turn it such that the bottom of the vent is level with this and I know it'll be level with the camper. So I'm just gonna stick it in part way and eyeball it. All right, that's good. Now I'm just gonna pre-drill in these holes that are already in the vent. And then we'll go ahead and put one of the screws in just to make sure it's what I want. Perfect. I'm not actually putting a lot of torque on these screws. I don't want to break the plastic for one, but two, it's a little bit of a cool day and the butyl tape is a little stiffer than usual. It's still fairly supple, but what I'll do is when it warms up a little bit, I'll come back out here and I'll just barely crank them down a little bit more and that should be a perfect seal. All right, so I just tried it out and it seems to be working well. I closed both doors, both windows. I turned the vent fan on the setting where we normally run it when we're sleeping. And sure enough, I felt lots of air coming through that passenger side vent. So it looks like it's gonna work well. Now I'm also gonna put one on the driver's side, but I won't show you that in this episode because I've already showed you the other one. Um, and hey, I think this is gonna be a good upgrade. Now, if it's something you'd like to do to your own camper, you know, do some research, see how much airflow you need. You know, don't go off of what I'm saying. I'm just showing you what I did on my own. It's definitely not a guide for what you should do to yours. But hey, if you like today's episode, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't checked out our Patreon page, go over to patreon.com forward slash camping camera if you'd like to support the channel and see some behind the scenes content. So until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.